And now we're going to look at the theoretical perspectives of addictive disorder, part two. There are many reasons why we try to regularly use drugs and or alcohol, from feeling growing up, to needing to relax, or managing stress, or to rebel. No matter, there, uh, no matter, no matter as there are many different entry points, we are going to review several of the major theoretical perspectives on substance use disorder. And we'll start with the biological. Biological perspectives focus on uncovering the biological pathways that may explain the mechanisms of physiological dependence. These perspectives focus on the role of the neurotransmitters and genetic factors in the vulnerability to dependence. First, the neurotransmitter roles. The pathways to the brain involving the neurotransmitter dopamine may explain the pleasure-induced effects of many drugs, nicotine, alcohol, cocaine, heroin, even marijuana. Uh, by increasing levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine, dop um, dopamine is the brain's reward and reinforcement agent. Secondly, genetics. There appears to be genetic factors that run in families, and twin studies suggest a link more for men. Much work is still emerging and there are there appears to be strong um, environment factors associated with the genetic predispos predispositions. From the learning perspective, learning theorists view substance abuse disorder as a learned pattern of behavior and can, in principle, be unlearned. These focus on the role of operant in classical conditioning and observational learning. Substance use problems are regarded not as symptoms of disease, but rather problems of habits. With operant conditioning, we'll perform for, um, we will perform for the reinforcement, drugs. People may be reinforced for the, uh, by the effects of the drug to reduce stress and depression. Alcohol and tension reduction when um, we drink to relieve uh, tension and the more we do this the more we drink that's habit forming negative reinforcement withdrawal if you stop cold turkey you may start again to avoid the withdrawal syndromes uh, symptoms and so that might be another condition conditioned model the conditioned uh, we could be conditioned to crave the drug and alcohol through associations that things like seeing a bar creates a craving. You go in and have a drink. See your drug friends prompts a craving. And then there's observational learning. There's a strong link with families with adult drinkers as parental models. So now we'll move into the cognitive perspective. And of course, this is about faulty thinking. So the cognitive perspective emphasizes the roles of attitudes, belief, and expectations and accounting for substance use and abuse. When we have positive expectancies of alcohol and other substances to reduce tension or to be better accepted or liked by others, for example, there tends to be a predictor of abuse. So if you start drinking or go to parties because there are things will be there and you'll be seen in a better light, that's part of what that point is about. Self-efficacy or the belief in your ability to accomplish tax, tasks, the perception that alcohol or other substances will in some manner improve our ability to do and accomplish things will increase the likelihood to use and potentially abuse. Now research suggests that one drink effect may be self-fulfilling prophecy. That is, if you think you can, uh, that the outcome will be good, you are more likely to use and use in larger quantities. Now the psychodynamic perspective, these theorists view the problem of substance abuse such as excessive drinking and habitual smoking as signs of oral fixations. With a mixed research support, the empirical connection between dependence and alcoholism does not establish that alcoholism represents an oral fixation that can be traced to early development. Now that's always been somewhat the, of one of the major complaints of psychoanalytic based on Ford's theories is the empirical data doesn't exist. Now the sociocultural perspective, 
they lay the importance on the adoption of culturally sanctioned prohibition against excessive drinking and explaining the differences between various ethnic and religious groups and rates of alcoholism. The social factor, such as peer pressure or the influence that uh, the influence the development of a substance abuse. So if we're going to tie all this together, substance use disorder are complex patterns of behavior that involve an interplay of biological, psychological, and environmental factors. Genetic predisposition may interact with environmental factors that increase the potential for drug abuse and dependence. Cognitive factors, especially positive drug expectations, may also raise the potential for alcohol and drug problems. The sociocultural factors include factors such as availability of alcohol and other drugs and the presence or the absence of cultural uh, constraints. The learning theorists attribute addiction to positive and negative reinforcement arising from the effects of drugs. So substance abuse disorder should be approached considered, considering this complex interplay of all factors. So that ends part two, looking at the theoretical perspectives. What we'll move to in the last video in this week will be the, you know, the treatments, and that will be part three. So we'll see you in part three.